Okay, we finished the um, Loudon Boomer Mark II A, aka Helicrafters HT45. Um, we did have a, uh, I don't know if we'd call it an accident, a boo boo, or something. Um, it didn't go boom, but it went um, flash after we tried degaussing the um, 3400Z it originally came with, which was this guy, past tense. Um, the reason we tried degaussing it so tough, and we um, ran plate voltage and drive, and we had it keyed down for three hours, cheering, pulling current. Um, the reason we tried that is because this had 20 megahertz of resistance between uh, ground and the um, cathode or the filament. Um, so I figured that uh, 20 meg might be gas in it. It's reading something and degaussing, heating this thing up and letting it cook um, for a while would help that. But even after I cooked it for three hours and while I was cooking it, uh, I had the, the um, Tram Titan key down and the little Black Cat JB76, um, I think. No, I didn't have a Palomar Skipper 300 for the driver because the um, Black Cat wasn't hitting it quite hard enough and the Black Cat was overheating. So I had a Palomar Skipper in line driving it and keyed it for three hours and I had the um, 3 kilovolt power supply on a Variac and I had it dialed, dialed down to 1 kilovolt um, going into the uh, Loud and Boomer. And that's the Variac. And what I found out is it killed my uh, 10 amp Variac um, it was pulling about 6 amps out the Variac and it's a 10 amp Variac but something melted or something happened and now it won't turn and it won't Variac and uh, I'm not gonna play with that I'll probably just get rid of it so if anybody wants a project non-working non-turning Variac for a song and a dance just make me an offer cuz uh, it ain't gonna do me no good so anyway, once I cooked it for the three hours and cooked the Variac, but everything else seemed to be working and it was doing power on the uh, thousand volt scale with drive into it. I took the Variac out of line and put it on full power and fired it, fired it up and it, it didn't go boom. It went flash and arc and uh, that tube used to look like new. That's the original 3400Z that was in it, right? So, as you can see, that was a pretty darn good arc there inside of it. And it blew the power supply, and that was that. So, since 3400Zs here are, are hard to find and expensive, we went ahead and took it out, and we got a 3500Z and put in there, and we had a chimney, that's the 3400Z, or the chimney for the 3400Z. We had a chimney for a 3500Z, and we had a plate cap that was short instead of tall. So it fits in there real nice, but um, we need to cover on for the interlock, so you can't really see it very well in there. But it's in there cooking now, the uh, 3500Z with the chimney. It's actually a, a Aria Parts 3500ZG and uh, we got the black cat in line and uh, actually we got our watt meter set up so the um, black cat driver there is going to show on this watt meter on the 200 watt scale and over here we got that one for the output of the um, Halicrafters on a uh, 2000 watt scale going into a dummy load that way it's going to read my uh, drive power here and my output power there at the same time and the one in the middle there goes into my antenna but this um, is going into a dummy load and I guess that's enough talking I think I covered everything I want to cover oh one other thing I did found is that when you turn the plate switch on that applies plate and keys this amplifier um, this amplifier has no cutoff bias so when you turn the plate on, it's drawing current and it's cooking. Um, but how it works is um, with the plate off, and we got a uh, foot switch on this one. 
uh, to key it up. Well, actually, I can key it down now. You you hit the foot switch, it turns the plate on. And you know you can't really do that with a capacitor uh, bank on the high voltage, because again, when you charge up them capacitors, it's almost like a dead short. So every time you, if you had a capacitor bank, um, every time you key down, um, them to capacitors would be charged and it'd be like dead short dead short dead short and it and it wouldn't like it but this has a choke uh, input on the high voltage instead of the capacitor bank and the chokes when you hit them it's not like a uh, dead short like a capacitor bank um, chokes are more expensive and you don't get as much voltage out of them but you don't have the uh, capacitor bank and the charging problems and it also is easier on the transformer or it uses more of the transformer than a capacitor bank so uh, you could get more power out of the transformer with a choke input but nowadays you know everybody goes with um, um, electrolytic capacitors so anyway um, keying her down with the foot switch and uh, you can see the plate voltage um, it's running about 2700 volts it runs about 3,000 unloaded, but again, this is um, loaded with the tube on it, and got to key down the mic. You always want to key the amplifier before you key down the mic, and I left this on peak watts. I didn't mean to do that, but that's on 2,000 watts peak on the um, output of this amplifier. It does a whole lot less on uh, average with this uh, swinging black hat, and this is what the... Uh, Black Hat is putting into it on the 200 watt scale there so I'm dead keen about 8 audio audio talking about 50 60 in oh, knock my tube over and it's dead keen about 80 and uh, swinging to about 1100 audio audio on peak and I'm gonna put it on average it doesn't do as much on average as I thought it would do but as you can see on peak it's doing the do one tube uh, three five hundred Z now instead of a three four hundred Z key or now audio 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 it's talking about 450 maybe 500 And it's whistling to about 700. That's bird watts. So, anyway, um, that's the high voltage. I guess I got to unkey the mic to use another hand to turn here. Um, that's the plate milliamps with the um, plate on with no drive. And then with the drive, that's um, how many milliamps it's pulling. And grid current audio barely hitting the grid current meter so it's not uh, being drove too hard and we'll see the plate um, voltage drop audio audio dropping a little but not dropping much audio audio with that um, swinging choke and then a capacitor uh, 8 UF capacitor after the swinging choke so anyway um, I've had it keyed down for a long time and this thing you know with a 3500Z um, just doing his thing audio low dead key with the black cat going into it again that's what's going into it on the 200 watt scale and that's what's going out on the 2000 watt scale so it's all it's doing about eight or nine times what goes in it which is pretty good again that's on average and last I'm gonna put it over on peak one more time I do how like how the lights come on when you um, key it audio 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 and there we go 1100 peak I think it'll do it all day because again this thing is built like a tank um, one more thing we found I did that video on how that capacitor extra capacitor works when you uh, turn the dial around here but I didn't see the switch under here this here on and off as that extra capacitor let me turn this thing off 
if I start sticking my fingers around with you know 3,000 volts going into it so anyway this here uh, turns that extra uh, tuning cap or tune capacitor a fixed one it switches in line which you need more capacitance for the um, higher bands or the lower frequencies so you turn that on it switches it in for the um, higher bands like um, I think you need it for 20 and 40 meters or it might be just 40 meters you need it for and then you just leave it off for the um, other bands because it's not needed um, and when you turn the band switch to the other bands it switches in those extra capacitors on the load as needed with the band switch anyway I like this amplifier um, single 3500 Z um, talks about 500 whistles about 700 average and uh, uh, 1100 peak alright that's it for this one bye